But the point is that you cannot convince me that the Na Akufuado's governance has exhibited poor leadership. You cannot convince me because the facts don't support what you are saying. If you are talking about incompetence, it is not about Na Akufuado's administration. Rather, your administration that was headed by John Damani Mahama. I want to ask my brother some few questions. Is it not true that when we took over power on the same of January 2017, between 2017 and 2019, we recorded trade surpluses on each year? Three consecutive trade surpluses between 2017 and 2019. Is it not true? Is it not also true that we were able to record positive prime balances from 2017 to 2019? Is it not true? Is it not also true that we were able to grow the economy averagely by 7% between 2017 and 2019? For the squat chip also, is it not true? Is it also not true that between 2013 and 16, you grew the economy averagely by 2.8%? Is it not true, Felix? Felix, is it, is it not true that we were, when we took over, interest rates, Bank of Ghana policy rates, about 25.5 percent. Is it not true that we're able to bring it down to as low as 14.5 percent before, to, even, even as of last year? Is it not true that when we took over between 2017 and 2019, the currency depreciated by 8.7 percent? Is it not true that under your tenure between 2013 and 2016, the city depreciated by about 18 percent? Is it not true? Because see, we in government has admitted that we are in difficult trying moments. And Felix, my good friend, in his heart of hearts, knows that what we are going through is not because we have mismanaged the economy. As we did say, we are being affected and pushed by exogenous factors. And I want my brother to mention five countries in the world that have not experienced devastating economic consequences since 2019. This is the facts. US of A, UK, the advanced economies, even they are struggling. You see, they are, they are battling with inflation. They are battling with high cost of foodstuff, goods and services. Unemployment is an issue. Currencies are not doing well. As we speak, the only currency in the world that is doing so well, that has gained strength as compared to other currencies, is the US dollars. And that is a fact. They cannot dispute that. Every currency is not doing well. I can see. There's not a single person on this earth who can tell anybody in Ghana that times are better now than it was when President Hoover took over. So I think Dr. Nyaku and his colleagues must be free from that. When you do that, you are rubbing salt in the injuries of Ghanaians. And there's a lot of anger in the system that you, must, that you must gauge in your public pronouncements. You see, they speak as if the MPP was elected to do a mandate between 2017 and 2019. For crying out loud, you are in your sixth year. So your governance did not stop in 2019. In any event, I will see, every indicator shows that by 2018, you have started mismanaging this economy. And if you want to see how an economic is mismanaged, you look at the deficit. Essentially, it's about your expenditure and your revenue. You started squandering the money given you on frivolous expenditure. When you finished, you lied about it through your teeth, told lies. You wanted to hide the fact that you were mismanaging the economy by concealing some expenditure items so that you don't disclose it until you were exposed. When you took other documents to the IMF, which disclosed the true figure, and came to Parliament to lie, that in three years successively, you had kept the deficit under 5%, when indeed it was above 7%. And you see, I would ask Dr. Nyako to refrain from reciting macroeconomic indicators. There is not a single one of those indicators that is not worse today than it was under President Mahama. GDP. What GDP? You, you, you have done GDP of 0.4%. You are no, not no, shy. No, no, Please, no, oh, no, Doc, no. when you were speaking, no. I kept quiet. What is the figure now? I kept quiet, Doc. Right. And, Doc, you are an academic. 
anybody who takes only one indicator out of 18 <laughs> to do an oh yes yes you see anybody who takes one indicator <laughs> oh i beg your, i beg your pardon anybody who takes one he should do a trend analysis with me it's not just a trend analysis if you take one out of 18 indicators mm. used to assess an economy and tell me that that one is good but every 18 years is bad but you've done better you are not being fair you understand me you are not being fair to yourself you're you're you are held in high esteem you see your qualification is such that people believe that you Go appreciate the, the importance of data. <laughs> the, the highest <laughs> GDP we have had under yes. the Fourth Republic mm. was 14.4%, achieved under an NEC government. 2014. That is the highest. The lowest GDP we've had is 0.4, achieved under Kufuado. That closes the argument. Indeed, before oil was discovered, before oil production started, in 2010, mm. we grew by above 8%. Even in 2012, we grew by 9.2%. In 2013, we grew by 7.2%. The highest we've had is 8.1%. So your GDP comprising is a joke. If you do a chain analysis, if you do an average GDP calculation, we grew averagely at 6% over 8 years. You have had 0.4% in 2020, and you are happy to gloat about it on national television. Our lowest was about 2.5%. Your lowest was 0.4%. The worst in the history of the Fourth Republic. So it is nothing to gloat about. Accuracy. I will go to the rest of the 18. The deficit we left them was 6.1% in 2016. They have racked up deficit of 17% in 2020. What is the interest rate today? Above 35%. What did we leave them? It was below 30%. Inflation for October is 40.4%. When they came, inflation was 15.4%. If you read Kelvin's first budget, it was 15.4. Today it is 40.4. The exchange rate. In 10 months, the city has plummeted by 54%, making it the worst performing currency in the world. How do you sit here and compare this to what happened in 2014, which was nowhere near what we are having today? I can see our public debt was 120 billion when Kaluforiata, Alaji Baumia, and Akufuadu were going around, bastardizing the government. Our debt to GDP ratio was 56% in 2016 when we were bastardizing the government. Today, our debt is 500 billion, almost four times what we came to inherit. Depreciation of the currency alone has contributed 100 billion Ghana cities to that amount. I can see, only two weeks ago, in this very budget that Dr. Nyako has, Kadofrata lied that our debt to GDP ratio was 76%. He didn't lie. Ah, so he was telling the truth. Today, they themselves now admit that it is 105%. Because, you see, for three years, we had been telling them that they have been concealing the true figures. They were hiding debts in SOEs. They were hiding debts accruing through continual liabilities. And they were hiding debts that were on the books of dodgy SPVs that they created. We told them that you needed to add it in order to come to a true conclusion about your debt. But they thought they were smart. As we say in a can, Uzi Sian and Uzi Sian, today they have been caught red handed, pants down, because the IMF has insisted that they do a, a DSA. And I'm sure you heard earlier in this week about the interaction they had with bankers, where directors at the finance ministry were publicly disclosing that indeed our debt to GDP ratio is 105%. How do you sit on television as an academic and tell me that a debt to GDP ratio of 56% in 2016 is worse than this one and that you were better now? I mean, how do you make such analysis? How can you even look people in the eye and say this? Which indicator? I will see, check their primary balance that he makes noise about. In the budget, they projected that in the first three quarters, they will make a primary balance of 1%. Can of Rata disclosed that it's actually 2.7%. Primary balance. That is the difference between your expenditure and revenue minus interest payments. Look at the amount of interest you pay. Indeed, at the, by the second, the half, the first half of this year, they were spending 83% of tax revenue to service debt. This year alone, they will spend close to 60 billion servicing debt. We were spending 11 billion in 2016 servicing debt. And Kenofrata was disparaging the finance minister at the time. Today, he's finance minister. He is spending 83% of tax revenue to service debt. And you say that he has performed well. And that President Kufadu cares about us. You care about us, and you plunge us, plunge us into the worst economic crisis in our history. And it's like, let him stop that baseless comparison with countries in the West. 
Inflation in UK is not 40.4%. They are nowhere near the economic disaster you have imposed on the people of Ghana. There's none of our neighbors, even politically unstable Burkina Faso, does not have inflation anywhere close to 40%. You have it. Cote d'Ivoire doesn't have it. Cote d'Ivoire has inflation below 10%. Benin, Togo, War Rabbit, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Guinea, that is under military dictatorship, does not have inflation around 40%. And I could say it was not COVID that caused this disaster. Check their budgets. It is unbridled borrowing. Your belief that you can borrow and hide it, spend on frivolous expenditure. Look, and I speak about disrespect all the time. I could say check this budget. At a time when Ghanaians have voiced disapproval of frivolous expenditure, like spending on a, a needless national cathedral, trying to harvest religious fundamentalism for political reasons. You go and put in a budget that you spend an additional 80 million Ghana cities on that project. You bring the total expenditure to 400 million. Meanwhile, and he was not too long ago in the education sector. For three years straight, you could not print textbooks for basic school people. As I speak, there are food shortages in senior high schools. Children are eating food, which with the greatest respect, some homes will not feed to their dogs. You cannot pay contractors. You have over 40 to 50 billion Ghana cities in debt owed to contractors. We will come to the haircuts. People's lifetime investments, you have taken away from them in the name of haircuts. Yes, I'm not going to talk about it substantively. You, it means that you are in such hard times, okay, that you can't pay people money that you owe them. You take 80 million and go and invest in a, a needless cathedral. When you finish, you tell me that you care about the people of Ghana. A, a man who cares about the people of Ghana does not deliver this terrible governance. And I would say without fear of equivocation that President Akufuado has been the worst president we've had in this history. No and you see, when he mentioned President Mahama, look, no there's not a single metric that President Akufuado beats Mahama on. He read extra from President Mahama's speech, right? And you see, he didn't know that he was exposing himself mm. and the hollowness of the MPP argument. They go about saying that this is the first time we've had the Venus shocks. Yet he read to you the hit that we took when oil prices plummeted. Since they came to power, they have received this year, by the close of this year, they will have received close to 20 billion Ghana cities in oil revenue. President Mama did not have half of that. Go and check the amount of taxes they collected. By the close of this year, if you put all the resources they received together, it will amount to about 600 billion Ghana cities. Ghanaians have been patient enough to give you this sort of money. And he speaks about doing so. You see, what he does not know is that the IPPs have been very magnanimous with you. You owe them a billion dollars, which in today's terms is about 15 billion Ghana cities. And what did you do really to improve them? So, what role did Akufadu play in the establishment of the Ghana gas plant, which has saved us 300 million dollars of fuel imports? What role did you play? What role did you play in bringing Ameri? Today, you are saying that you will take Ameri to the Ashanti region, your stronghold. <laughs> what role did you play? With? Car power, which helped resolve the crisis. What role did you play? With? I, I love I see, let I him love show me love. one megawatt that Akufuado has organically added to what he came to meet. Then I will applaud him right. for helping resolve Dumso. Right. Why? When we came to power, were there not, was there not Dumso under President Kufuor? It came to a head under President And you see, that is the difference between that is the difference between President Mahama and Akufuado. President Mahama took responsibility. That's Akufuado. He rides away from responsibility like a plague. After mismanaging the economy, he says he should go and blame COVID. Meanwhile, COVID did not bypass every country and come to Ghana. He should tell me how many countries he knows have done the haircuts, the terrible haircuts that they've done this week. How many countries do you know who have done the terrible... The anyway, last time a country did this was in Greece. 